My name is Sylvia Murphy Tai. I'm a midwifery lecturer in the Department of Nursing and Midwifery here at the University of Limerick. And today I'd like to talk to you about the focus of my doctoral research, which was concealed pregnancy. Now this is a sensitive subject and one there is little known about. When we consider concealed pregnancy, we often think of it as a historical phenomenon and one of Ireland of the past. People might consider and know about mother and baby homes, Magdalene laundries and enforced adoptions. In my research, the Keeping It Secret study, we endeavoured to speak to women about their experiences and what they have told us has shed a great light on the phenomenon of concealed pregnancy. I have had the privilege of interviewing 30 women about their experience of concealed pregnancy. I also, as part of the research, have looked at media reports that have involved concealed pregnancy and this is something I want to talk about a little later. So what do women have to say about their experiences of concealed pregnancy? Women told us that concealing a pregnancy was a sad, difficult and a lonely time in their lives. Indeed, for some women, it was a traumatic experience. So as part of the research, I had the privilege of speaking to 30 women who came forward to share their experiences of concealing a pregnancy. Women spoke about concealing a pregnancy as a difficult, lonely and traumatic time in their lives. And the context for some women is that they were living in coercive, violent or abusive relationships. As part of the research, I analysed 22 cases of public interest which involved concealed pregnancy. I analysed these media reports and found that the tone and the tenor of these reports were sometimes cruel, insensitive and indeed considering the context of women's lives were sometimes highly inappropriate. It is really important that media guidelines are developed to influence how journalists and broadcasters report on concealed pregnancy. During the conduct of my doctoral research, we had two high profile cases of newborn abandonment in Ireland during that time. And I analysed particularly these two cases and found that the headlines were damning. They were sensational and they were not all from the tabloid media. Some of the headlines, such as Bin Bag Tot, Come and Get Your Baby, or Hunt for Woman, were some of the headlines I came across. Not only were the headlines insensitive, but the tone and the tenor of the language apportioned blame to the woman without considering the context that the woman may have been residing in. From other cases and international and contemporary cases that involve concealed pregnancy that I have analysed, I have found it is a highly complex area that sometimes the rights of the child take precedence rather than the rights of the woman. And I think it's incredibly important that when they report on concealed pregnancy in such cases, that they balance the rights of both the woman and the infant. Now, of course, press freedom is a really important tenet of any democracy. I am not talking about, you know, cutting down on reporting of such cases because without some of the media reports, I would not have had access to such data. Indeed, the KISS study, the Keeping It Secret study, would have not been done without the assistance and support of the media. We issued a press release and 60 women came forward to talk about their experiences. And as I've said earlier, I interviewed 30 of these women. So what have we learnt from undertaking this research? We have learnt that media reporting must be sensitive. 
I contend that there needs to be ethical guidelines around reporting, like there is in the case of suicide today. Indeed, some of the women that I spoke to had recently uh, experienced a concealed pregnancy. They were not all women who had experienced, you know, enforced uh, adoption in the past. What lessons can be learnt uh, from undertaking this research? I think it's really important that the institutions of the state appreciate and understand the complex and sensitive nature of concealed pregnancy. The media, the fourth estate, is a really big player uh, and the institutional responses of policing, of healthcare, are equally as important. If you have been affected by any of the issues raised in this short talk, I would urge you to talk to your family doctor. Women have spoken about concealed pregnancy. They have said it left ripples that last a lifetime. Women have said you would need a mop-up team to deal with concealed pregnancy. And what women have told me is that by talking to another professional, a counsellor, a doctor, in confidence, that that has helped them to make sense of what has happened in their lives and to come to terms with the experience of concealed pregnancy. If you have been affected by any of these issues, you can contact me, um, sylvia.murphy at ul.ie, or indeed make contact with the Samaritans or perhaps your family doctor. Thank you.